this is Saladin Salam from King Corso Historical Talk, King of Depressor, and Mastino, I mean Neapolitan Mastino Historical Talk. Um, got Mike Satilli, he's going to be explaining to you about the history of the breed, and hopefully you be attentive and pay attention. All right, here you go right now. All right, Mike. Uh, yes. You want to know from the beginning? Yes. Neos and Russos and everything. Okay. Um, the dogs The dogs started in my family in 1911. My grandfather, Rafael Grimaldi, he brought dogs over in 1911. They were called Connie Depressa. They were not called Neapolitan Mastiffs. They were not called Connie Corso. They were called Connie Depressa. He brought them over in 1911. He was exposed to the, because he lived with, with uh, his grandparents, and they raised the dogs. He was that with them. And later in life, after my grandfather was too old to take care of the dogs, my father missed the dogs in the 70s. Like around 1972, he inquired about importing some Neapolitan Mastiffs from uh, Italy. And he imported from uh, Miranopoli Kennels, from Palo Testa, around uh, the Naples area. And what he did was he brought over uh, three dogs in the beginning. He brought over a male named Victor, a female named Sophia, and a female named Gina. And those were the nucleus of his beginning of his program. He didn't like Victor that much, so he went to a, to a person named Jane Pampaloni in New York City, and uh, he kept the two females. And then later on, my father acquired a male uh, from Nicola and Bimbo, and Nicola and Bimbo wrote the book for me about the Mastiffs in the 1970s. And he had a dog named Arno. Arno was, uh, was a tawny, or fawn, and he used that dog as the nucleus for his beginning breeding program, the Neos. In 1974, he, uh, he started the Neapolitan Mastiff Club of America, which was a registry, and he also held dog shows. And my father kept the records for 20-some-odd years, and after my father passed away, I kept the records for about five, six records, five, six uh, years until they were starting to become uh, AKC recognized. Uh, my father also bred Connie Corsos, but they weren't called Connie Corsos, the dogs that he got. My father got dogs from Sicily. What happened was my father was in Sicily attending a wedding. He was driving. He was driving in a car. Alongside a highway was some dogs that looked like like Neo, like Neos from like the 70s, and they were herding cattle, and there was a couple people with the dogs. He made the driver pull over, and he started talking to the to the to the to the farmer. And the farmer asked him, "What do you want these dogs for?" He said, "I want to, to show them." He goes, "Well, I don't know why anybody would want these dogs unless uh, unless they're going to be worked on cows." He asked him, "Do you own cows?" And my father said, "No, I don't own cows." He goes, "Well, what do you want the dogs for?" Because I liked him. So later on, he he uh, he haggled, and he ended up. They made it. They, they ended up agreeing that he would send my father uh, a pregnant female. And what happened was the pregnant female, the farmer waited way too long in the pregnancy, and she started having puppies in the crate, in the plane, in the cargo bay, uh, on the way over. And then when we got her, she had puppies in a crate, and she was still delivering puppies in our in our van on the way home from JFK to New Jersey. And then she delivered the rest of the puppies in uh, our basement in New Jersey. And uh, sad to say, she passed away like a day later because all the stress from being in transit like made her weak, and she passed away. She died. But... Uh, she did have to make, set the record straight. It was only my father and I who went and got the dogs. No other person, no other breeder was privileged to see these puppies born. 
as far as rumors go, there was different breeders, uh, Linda Sanino, Eddie Otis, no, none of those people had anything to do with these dogs. It was just my father and I, and we had the dogs. There was 16 puppies born, 15 lived, and that was the litter that Kokomo, Doro, Tori, Balo, Bowie, all them, the Malokia, all them dogs came out of. I mean, that was the original, the Fantastic Six, or whatever, whatever they call them. But that's where they came from, because it was from the Sicilian Bronchiato, and later on, we started calling them Connie Corsa because that's what people told us they were. But to tell you the truth, I s still think they're a different, kind of a different breed, but similar. Right. And that's that's you know and that's uh, that's how we came about with the with the Corsa Bronchetto dogs. You know, they came from Sicily. So and the, how did um all right? Because I know that you own Kokomo, um and. How did that come about? Like with the the role of Linda Valentine and Linda Salino and all these other you know people in America that started breeding their dogs. Because definitely we know everybody got their dogs from you. But basically, all these people were friends of my father, Spud and Neos, and Linda Valentine. I believe was from Pennsylvania. So she lived right. Drive. She 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 did. The Sanino lived in South Jersey. Jersey, right. So we already knew her. She had bought a few nails from us, I believe. Right. And uh, there was other people, you know, within the metropolitan, New York metropolitan area that that my father and uh, and his wife, they placed out my dogs on breeder terms. Because there was no market for, for Sicilian banqueros in 1988. Nobody knew what the hell they were. Right. You know, nobody knew what a Corsa was, to tell you. <laughs> But, yeah, and that's how it all started, them becoming breeders from us making them breeders. Right. By letting the stock that we had, you know. So, and, uh, um, it's been rumored to say that your dogs were part Rottweiler. You know, I've, de I've defended that, saying that that's not the truth of the matter in a lot of forums. So, this is set the record straight with the pop, you know, the population, the public. Let them know that, is that true or not? No, there's, there's no Rottweiler crossed in them. The Rottweiler, the dog itself is, if you look up any documentation that you can find, the dog is from the Bullenbizer, from the German Bullenbizer. Uh, Bullenbizer was the, the forerunner of the boxer, and supposedly the Rottweiler and the Great Dane and all those breeds. And the dog does come in pointed colors. The dog naturally came in black and tan, or tan, black and mahogany, whatever you want to call it, but uh, red and tan. And sometimes they came out with a dilute nose, which is some people call red nose. And they came in all different shades and variations, and they came out in like a chestnut brindle or red brindle that they came out in. And the reason why they come out in blue and tan is because the only cross that we used was a Neapolitan Mastiff, about three different bloodlines we used because our brown cattle were very inbred when we got them. So we needed, to, we needed uh, blood, fresh blood. And that's where the blue and tans came from. Sorry to disappoint everybody, but the Rottweiler was not used in our stock. Further down the road, when we sold it to different breeders, for four Marathi breeders, some of them thought the Corsa was a step up from Marathi, and they were all a lot of, even Linda Sanino's husband, he bred Rotties, okay? There was a lot of people that bred Rotties. Um, we did not cross Roddy's. I'm not going to go mentioning names, but there was several people that I know as a fact used Roddy into their Corsos. Right. And that's where the Corso got the Roddy, because they getting pointed dogs, so they figured they could get away with it, and they bred it to a pointed dog. That's what they did. And people also used giant 
like a weight pull pit bulls. I know that for a fact. They use those big uh, Land of Giant type Red Mars type pit bulls into them. And that's where that's that's basically but that was that wasn't extensive using those dogs or the Rottweiler. Basically what the dogs crossed with was the bronchiatal that we had into different stud dogs and bitches that we had from the Neos that we were breeding. Right. I can even tell you what dogs were used as which Neos were used. Uh, I mean it's not a big secret. We used like three different stud dogs, two different stud dogs, and a female Neo. Right. And that's that I mean that were that were slightly related and mostly outcrossed for each other so we wouldn't have a problem of inbreeding for a very long time. Time, right. And tell you which Corsos were bred into the Neos. I mean, it's not a secret. I mean, we used Brutus, the dog with the Nat, with me, my national champion for the NMCA, Neapolitan Mastiff. Uh, you can you can Google his videotape online and see the dog, a videotape of the dog. The dog was magnificent for his day in 1989. He was 100%. The Panzano bloodline, that means Mario Corci was the breeder on his parents. And we used that dog into a Doro tank daughter. And we created a line from that. I took it upon myself. I owned Kokomo for the first two and a half years. I took Kokomo. We used a pure Sicilian bronchetto. And I bred him into a black brindle female, Neapolitan Mastiff, named Sarah. And that's what produced Champion Rocco's litter. And Sarah was a grandmother of Champion Nero, Belmonte's Nero. Okay. Hey. So, I mean, that's... And then we also used a dog named Champion Big Boy Bruiser. We used him into a, another daughter of, uh, of uh, Doro or down from Doro or something like that. And that was our three, three or four lines that we used to not back in... You know, so we had a genetic pool of dogs that weren't like uh, brother, sister, half brother, sister. We had like a bloodline. Right. And to tell you, we have the American original courses are the only ones that can actually say with 100% certainty that they trace back to the original Scanziani dog of Wyoming. Right. The Neapolitan Mastiffs. That's, that's a fact. I know Arnold. He, he traces back right to Wyoming, right to Wyoming, Scanziani's dog. And I know Quirchy's dogs were used by Scanziani because Quirchy was a, around in the 50s. Right. So I fact that our Corsos go back to that original dog that they, that the, that the Neo breeders claim to be a Neo. The, the Corso people claim it to be a, a Corso. And then there's the farmers that call it the Connie Depressant. All three breeds, but one dog. You know, same dog. Back in the, the early 50s was Wyoming. Right. And our dogs, our courses are the only ones that can actually prove that we go back to Wyoming. Okay. The Italians do because they don't admit that they crossbred the dogs to begin with. Ha! <laughs> true, true. So, we are the only ones on earth with courses that that actually can prove that we go back to Wyoming. Right. Um, that yeah. make a big difference, I don't know, but we can trace our dogs back 60 years if we really wanted to. Right. Um, let, me, let me ask another question. All right, today's Corsos, do you, I mean, the measure up from the Corsos from the past and the Corsos today, do, do you see a similarity or what the Corsos today are bad or are they good? All right, but give me a second. Uh, wait, give me a second. Give me a second. Give okay. me a second, cause the time. All right, hold up.